Are you curious about an Instant Pot Ace Blender? I was very curious, so I'm gonna review one today. I'm Urvashi Pitre, my blog is twosleevers.com, and this is an unbiased review. Nobody's paying me to do this. I bought my own blender so I could say whatever I want, which I tend to do a lot. I'm gonna walk you through um, the features that I've used so far. I have, haven't had it too long, so I haven't tried 16 different things, but there's enough for me to give you an idea of what's going on. All right, this is the blender. There are some functions that are uh, that use heat, and there are others that don't. So one of the things that makes this blender a little bit different is the fact that it has a heating element um, in the bottom of it. So if you look at this part of it, you'll see that it attaches to the bottom. Uh, it only goes in in one particular direction. It only goes in in one particular direction, so you can't mess up how it fits together. Uh, and this thing is extremely heavy, which for somebody with, I have rheumatoid arthritis, I have joint disease, um, I find this quite heavy. There's a plus and a minus. I weighed it earlier, it's about six pounds, it's made of glass, so it's very sturdy, and I think that when you're heating things in it, it's a good safety feature. However, I know for myself personally, there will be days I will not be able to lift it. So if you have um, any kind of a wrist issue or a hand issue or a strength issue, mobility issue, um, I would like to point that out. Now, in terms of how it fits together, on this side, is a little notch uh, with, a, with a little white arrow that tells us where it fits. And then over here is a little notch. And these two just go together. So unlike some other blenders, um, this will only fit on uh, the, the base in one particular direction. You have to remember that. The top, again, uh, because of its safety features, because you know you are going to be making hot things in it, um, fits in in a particular way. And it took me a minute to understand how it fits. Um, there's little uh, ridges out here, and there's a little notch in here, and those two need to fit together. So I was trying to do it this way initially and just really wasn't working. What you need to do is you need to hold this and put it down straight, okay? So look how I have this offset. Keep this as an offset and then spin it around to where the, this lip catches the ridges underneath and this is closed. And then this thing also comes out. Now in terms of what it came with, let me show you. So obviously it comes with a blender and the base and the heating element. It comes with a little bag that you can use to strain out uh, nut milk and other things that you might make. It comes with a handy cleaning brush and a tamper. So um, the tamper, you would take this out and you would push it, and as you see, the tamper falls short of the blades so that when you're tamping things down, you're not gonna be shredding a little bit so plastic in it. So it's well designed from that perspective. So that's essentially what it comes with. And let's talk about the features. As I mentioned, some of these are hot features, some of these are cold features. So the smoothie, puree, crushed ice, ice cream, and the nut milk do not use any heat. The soy milk, rice milk, and soup do use heat, okay? When I say use heat, a heating element comes on in the bottom uh, and uh, it makes the contents of this, this jar heat up. Very different from how some of the other blenders work where they swirl around so fast that the friction creates heat and that heat um, creates you know, a, a hot liquid in here. That's not how this works. This actually, when you turn it on, and I'll show you how that works, it heats up, uh, it comes to temperature, you can see that it's come to 212 and then it starts to cook in there. Okay. In addition to that, you've got basically low, medium, and high for blend speeds. Um, there's a cleaning speed. The clean, you know, uh, most blenders have this. It's not like it cleans it for you uh, that much, but I use this feature all the time in my other blenders. So you would put water in here, you would put a squirt or two of dish soap, and then you would simply run pulse and clean, and it spins and it, it'll clean everything in here. One of the things I like about this blender is that it comes on and off, it cycles on and off. So when you're doing a pulse clean, it doesn't just run for 30 seconds straight or whatever, it'll pulse, it'll let things settle, it'll pulse, it'll let things settle. Um, so I, you know, it, I think it helps mix up things a little bit better in the soup setting as an example. Um, the ice cream, let's talk about the ice cream. So it's not really making ice cream like a cold container. You're putting in frozen berries and liquid and you whirl it for a little bit. Uh, it pulverizes the, the cold berries, keeps it cold because this is a very quick process. And you're essentially doing what people on the blogs call nice cream, right? It's not really ice cream, it's uh, berries. The soy milk, rice milk, and soup settings, um, the hot plate comes on, the contents get heated. So 
the soup setting, for example, you will notice there are two buttons on here. Many of these have two buttons, the rice milk, the pulse, and the soup have two buttons. Uh, it's kind of like two different settings. So on the soup, the first setting, for example, if you wanted to do a soup where the contents heated, it whirled around and stirred it, but didn't pulverize, didn't blend, didn't make a creamy pureed soup, you would hit that setting. If you wanted a pureed soup, you would hit setting two. Now let me talk about the differences. In soup setting one, what happens is it'll come on, the hot plate will get hot, it will cook for 20 minutes, and at the end of 20 minutes, it'll beep to let you know it's done. In the puree setting of the soup, the pulverized setting, setting two, it's gonna come on, it's gonna show 22 minutes. It cooks for 20 minutes, and then it blends for two minutes, but not continuously. It'll blend, it'll pause, it'll blend, it'll pause, and I'm gonna show you that function as we go. So many people say, you know, how does this compare to a Vitamix? Well, let me tell you something. I think that's an unfair question to ask. This blender is $100. A Vitamix is anywhere between three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Okay, those things are expensive depending on what accessories you get. I think a more logical question to ask is how does this compare to every other hundred dollar blender out there? And let me tell you, I think it blows it out of the water. Again, unbiased opinion, nobody's paying me to say this. Uh, you know, this is, I've played with it a little bit. I will talk about whether you need this if you already have an instant pot and a Vitamix, for example. I'll talk about that later. Let me just show you the functions right now. So um, let, let's do this, let's try the soup feature and I'll show you kind of how this works, okay? So one of the things that's um, interesting about this is it says it's gonna be done in 20 minutes, the soup. It's gonna be done in 20 minutes after the hot plate has kicked in and after the liquid in here has come to 212 in temperature, okay? It's gonna start counting at that point. I'm going to go ahead and put some stuff in. This isn't, you know, this isn't really a recipe. I'm throwing stuff in, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. This is about a cup of water. I'm going to put, um, I have some Rotel because I like it spicy. Uh, I have chopped up carrots. What I think is best to do is to cut up things relatively small so that it, they will cook evenly. If you leave a huge chunk of uh, butternut squash, for example, in 20 minutes, it's not going to cook. I have celery that I'm putting in. I'm gonna put in a little bit of onion. I'm putting in some garlic and then a um, little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, okay? And um, I look at this and I think, eh, not enough liquid. So I'm gonna throw in another cup, okay? Now, what I intend to do with this is I intend to make a pureed soup, but first I want it cooked. But remember what I said, um, plunk it down flat, put this lid flat, switch it, it's gonna be closed. And at this point, let's start the soup function. Um, this is soup two, so it's got 22 minutes. You see, this is soup one. Let's start with soup two on this one because I do want to puree it afterwards. Now notice one of the not fun features for me. It doesn't start right away. It blinks, it thinks about it for a while. Okay, now look, see how it's whirling? It stops and you start to see this come up to temperature. If you want to change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, what you do is you press pause and you hold the pause button long enough until you hear a beep. Once you hear that beep, it has changed from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I have not yet figured out how to make it stay there. I'm finding that I'm having to do that each time. I guess if I read a manual for once in my life, I might figure it out, but I haven't bothered to do that. So anyway, for right now, I'm just pressing pause until I hear a beep that changes from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I press soup, I wait, and then it comes on. So it's gonna stir it, and then it thinks. And as you see from the temperature here below, it's right now at 69 Fahrenheit. So now th we have to wait until it comes up to, to heat. The good news is our waiting could involve going away and pouring ourselves a glass of wine. So you don't necessarily have to sit here, but just know that it's not like your soup is gonna be ready in 22 minutes. It's gonna be ready in 22 minutes, plus whatever time it takes for the hot plate to heat up. So let me clear away, away this mess, and I'm gonna show you some of the other stuff um, that I made in it. Okay, I don't make my own rice milk and my own almond milk. So I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I was gonna do it. Now, what they ask you to do is they ask you to use half a cup of uh, this five ounce cup for almonds, and then they ask you to use 48 ounces of water. Um, I did use half a cup of this, but I doubled up, uh, excuse me, I cut down on the water. So I used about 24 ounces of water because I wanted to see if I would get a really good thick almond milk. Now, because I don't use almond milk, I will tell you, I was quite convinced that there was absolutely zero reason for this nut bag. 
I was wrong. So I uh, put it through a strainer and it took some of the grit out. I took a sip and I was like, ooh, almonds. Uh, I put it in here and this is how much uh, of the almonds, you know, were still remaining in there. Now, a more industrious person than, um, than me would take this and uh, spread it out and dry it and get almond flour, which I use in a lot of recipes. I'm lazy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But anyway, you've got almonds on the side. The way that you would make the almond milk is you would put in uh, about half a cup of this half a five ounce cup, so two and a half ounces of almonds, and then either 24 or 48 ounces of uh, water the way you wanted it. I did half for taste, but also because I think this is more efficient to store in the refrigerator. Why would I store uh, extra water, right? Like, I think it's a lot easier. Oh, hey, look, it's saying hello to us. It, it kind of takes care of itself. Um, I feel like it's much better to get an almond milk concentrate and I can cut it when I'm making it. Um, I'm going to pour some of this out so you can see. So the, you, you put the almonds in there, you put the water in there, you press nut milk, it is a non-heated function, and it, the blender just does whatever it does. Like it'll stir, it'll blend, it'll do whatever, and then when it's done, it beeps. So it's, it's a little bit idiot-proof as far as I'm concerned. Um, it just does its job, and when it's done, it beeps. But let me pour this, and you can see that it's actually a good consistency for the almond milk. It's quite tasty, and... Um, you know, I, I think if you make almond milk at home, this is something that you will like. Now, many of the other blenders also make almond milk, um, but so does this little $100 blender. Let me now show you the rice milk. So again, I've never made rice milk. Uh, and if you're wondering why this particular rice milk is... Um, brown. It's because I decided to make horchata. So I put some cinnamon and some sweetener in it uh, when it was done to try it out. I do think that the, the rice milk consistency is quite different from the store-bought. So I will pour this. Now keep in mind, I did not mess with this recipe. It's actually a very, very thick mixture. Um, it's tasty. Let me try. It's actually really tasty. But it's very thick and viscous. Um, I don't mind that. I think you could strain it if you wanted to. I didn't mind it so much. But to be honest, it reminds me not so much of store-bought uh, rice milk as much as it does. It's kind of a thicker mixture than you might get at the grocery store. Now, there's nothing preventing you from watering this down, obviously. Uh, the nice thing about this is you know exactly what went into this. So if you're into making your own rice milk or almond milk, this is a really good blender. Some of the more expensive blenders I have, uh, they don't make rice milk or soy milk because of the because they require that to be heated. Um, you know, could you put in boiling water? You probably could, um, but this this blender will do it on your own. So I think that if you uh, enjoy soups and if you enjoy rice milk and uh, nut milk and oat milk and soy milk, uh, this is a very very good blender to consider. I will say it's quite fascinating to watch this when it starts to spin. The first time I saw it, I pulled a chair in and sat here and watched. And I have severe attention problems, so if I can watch for 20 minutes, something pretty exciting was going on. Now, let's get back to the soup for a minute, and let me tell you one of the things that you need to be really, really careful about, which is that this thing gets very hot. Okay, I know that sounds like a duh, obviously it gets hot, but we are not used to our blenders getting hot. Uh, and it takes a little bit of uh, uh, awareness to realize that this is 212 degrees, this is like a pot on the stove, and you need to be very, very cautious. In fact, what I tried to do was, you know, you don't want to put dairy and cheese in here when it's cooking, you want to be able to add that later. So when I first made the soup as a trial, um, I put in some half and half. I wanted to put in some half and half to make a nice creamy soup. Well, one of the things that happens when you do that is you're trying to take this out and it's very hot. This, this thing on top also gets very, very hot. So you need to use some kind of a silicone mitt or an um, oven mitt or something in order to do it. Okay, let me tell you the things that I like about this blender and the things that I'm, I'm not thrilled about. Let's start with the like. I like that it's got a fantastic motor. I love that it's Instant Pot. Those guys stand behind their products, as you know. They make good quality products. Um, there's a reason I have uh, cookbooks that use the Instant Pot. I really do think they're a good company and a good brand. Uh, I know that if something went wrong, they would stand behind the product, which makes me happy. I think it does um, almost everything that you would want in a blender, including crushing ice, by the way. I crushed it. Uh, it's not like thin snow consistency, but it would make a great margarita or a blended ice drink. It would do a really good job. Um, 
So those are the things I like about it. Um, I like the multiple features. I like being able to make soup in it. Um, I like being able to make the soy milk and the, the rice milk in it. The things that I don't like about it. Oh, I also like the fact that it's idiot proof in terms of how it fits in here. So for those of us who are spatially challenged, there's a visual indicator of how it fits. The things that don't work for me personally as easily are the fact that this top is made of very thick glass. From a safety perspective, it's fantastic. If you have a degenerative disease or strength issues or mobility issues, that may or may not work for you every day. I know that the days I have an RA flare up, I won't be able to use this. The other thing that I find a little bit limiting is the fact that you can't actually change the time and temperature. The time and temperature are fixed. So it's not like you can adjust the hot plate up and down. Uh, one of the things I had wanted to do was I had wanted to make a custard in here. Well, for a custard, you need 185 degrees. And I was like, oh, hey, great. I'll just put a cu can't. Uh, it's going to be 212 or nothing. You can't adjust the time to more than 20 minutes or 22 minutes. However, there's nothing preventing you from hitting pause and exiting out of it. Uh, now, I wish you could adjust the time because then I could set something for 10 minutes, walk away, and it would beep to remind me that it was done, which I find a very helpful feature. And then I could come turn it off. Uh, so the time is set, the temperature is set. Um, the other thing that I'm not sure about is there's a hot plate in here. So cleaning would have to be the way I mentioned earlier, which is you put water in it, you put a squirt of dish soap in it. And then you run it um, and, you know, it'll clean itself. But you definitely don't want to be submersing this whole thing, um, you know, into, uh, into water because it's got electronics in here. The other thing is I could make a pureed soup in my Instant Pot or my electric pressure cooker. What's going to happen, however, is I'm going to make the soup in there and then I'm going to get an immersion blender and I'm going to put it in there. Now, I will say the first time we made this, it makes a much smoother soup um, than putting an immersion blender into a, a a stainless steel liner that has been has vegetables cooked. If you stood there with your immersion blender for a long time and, and pureed you know, uh, the heck out of the soup, sure, it will be smooth. Uh, but this one kind of does that automatically. You've got one thing to wash. So now this is going to take a few minutes to cook. Uh, and in fact, you see this whole time I've been yapping at you, it's still not up to temperature. It's still only actually 197 degrees. So, you know, look, y it's a hot plate. Um, one of the nice things, by the way, about this is that you don't have to stand there and stir the soup. As long as you don't overfill it, I have not had to worry about the soup overflowing. So it's kind of a set and go. I can put it in here, I can go. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do now. It's set in here, I'm going to go, I'm going to come back in a little bit as the time comes closer to it, uh, and I'm going to show you how it finishes out the last couple of minutes of the blending. Okay, so we're back, and one of the nice things is that when the soup is done at the end of 20 minutes, it gives you a little thing here that says done. Um, it beeps at you so that you know it's finished and your soup is ready. Now, let's say that I changed my mind and I decide that I would like this um, in made into a smooth soup or that I would like to put some cream or something else in it. Now, ordinarily what I would do is I would just lift this out and I would put whatever ingredient I wanted and start the blender. One of the things I have to be careful with this one is that it's really, really hot. So my little silicone thing isn't going to work. I'm going to lift it with something, uh, with a little rag, a towel. Uh, I have in here some coconut milk. Now I'm doing this because I'm just trying to keep it a little bit vegan, but let's say that you had uh, cream or, or any dairy product or cheese that you wanted to put in. You would not put it in at the beginning co of cooking. Uh, you know, I'm a little concerned that it'll get underneath. It might burn. The cheese might stick there. So anything like that that you wanted to put in, you would put in at this point. And then this actually allows me to show you another feature, uh, which is the pure, the slow blend. So you have two ways of making smooth soup. Either you can do what I just did, you can set it uh, on soup setting one, let it go for 20 minutes, pour whatever additions you want, and then use a blender on it. Or you could set it on soup setting two, it's gonna cook, and then in the last two minutes it cycles and the blender goes on. So let us just hit cancel here. I'm gonna hit low blending, as you see. There we go. Watch this cycle. See this? So one of the things that's different about these blenders that have a broad base is that when you hit uh, blend, 
and you've got a lot of liquid in it, the liquid goes all the way like this, okay? So it jumps up and down in that. If you have a blender with a narrow bottom like that, typically it creates more of a centrifuge and you see this little, the food funneling down a little bit. The difference in that is aeration. So I definitely would not want to turn the soup on into a high blend um, unless, you know, I was trying to whip cream or something because I would be worried that there would be a little bit of air baked in there. So, and, and just something for us to be aware of in terms of how this blender bottom is built. Now, here comes the tricky part for a clumsy person like me. So the soup is done. I didn't have to use an immersion blender, which is a wonderful thing. And I will tell you, I do have another blender that makes soup from just the blades rotating. It's a very nice blender. I love it. Uh, the soup is not as good as this in that blender because that soup, the way that blender works is the heat is created from friction, not from a hot plate. And I noticed that when I put onions in that uh, in that other blender and make a soup out of it, you can taste the raw onions. Now, I am a super taster. Other people may or may not notice this, but I noticed this. Now, th for me, this is the difficult part, is that we have something here that's quite hot, uh, and it's full, and I have very bad um, arm strength, and I have to pour this, but I want you to look at the soup that I'm pouring, okay? It's a very smooth soup. Um, you can make it thicker or thinner, and as you saw, I didn't do much of anything. I basically threw in some vegetables, um, salt, pepper, and um, coconut milk. So one thing, obviously, you can make you can make soup in it. But as I was playing with this blender, I realized that you could actually make baby food in it. So let's say that I hadn't put all this and I had simply put carrots. What you would do, I think, is that you would fill this, um, you know, about to here with water. You would put uh, sliced up baby carrots in it. You would let it cook. And once it was done cooking, you would then take and pour the excess water out and you could blend the carrots in here as an example. So this is the Instant Pot Ace Blender. It's a good soup maker. It makes really good um, rice milk, soy milk, uh, things that need he to be heated up. Uh, and as I said before, it's currently $100. Uh, it's out there. So this was my review of the Ace uh, Instant Pot Blender. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, this is not a paid review. I do this on my own. So I buy all of the equipment. If you would like to help support, please use my affiliate link that I will provide in the, uh, in the box below. Uh, I'm Urvishi Pitre. My blog is twosleevers.com. And this was my review of the blender. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching.